Good afternoon, it's Kirsten here for another Thursday Spa Business Break on my Facebook page here. <clears throat> okay, so today I wanna to talk about outsourcing versus do-it-yourself. Because this is, um, you know, in the spa industry, most owners, I think, are chief cook and bottle washers. You guys are trying to do it all yourselves, especially when you're smaller teams. Now, if you're a spa that has a much larger team than uh, you probably have already done a lot of outsourcing <laughs> because you have a team. Uh, you may have a spa manager. You may have um, somebody who does your marketing for you. Um, and, you know, all you have to do is kind of show up at a strategy meeting and then everything else is done. So the bigger you become as a business, it becomes critical that you know when it's smart to outsource versus do it yourself. So today I want to talk about kind of the good, bad, and the ugly of outsourcing uh, some of your admin uh, versus do it yourself because uh, you know it's really easy to get stuck especially when you're cash strapped uh, it's really easy to get stuck in this mentality that you know there's just no way that you can outsource anything because you just don't have the money and that can be absolutely true for you you may be so cash strapped that the only way that you can do any kind of growth project whether it's learning about how to market your business more effectively whether that's social media whether that's your website whether that is uh, Facebook ads whether that is um, email marketing um, if you know that you you have you, you get, need to get better at any of your marketing and you are totally cash strapped, then that means that yep, you're going to have to carve out time for do it yourself stuff. So usually when we're getting started, we typically have we don't have um, we don't have a full book, so it kind of works out well so that we can we have the time for do it yourself. Uh, we don't have the money for outsourcing uh, your stuff. And so, yeah, that works out really well. Now, the kicker is, and this is where we, I want to talk about kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly of outsources, or outsourcing versus do-it-yourself because you can get stuck in do-it-yourself mindset because you've just been doing that the whole time. And there does get to a point when you're going to be too busy with um, other aspects of your admin time that needs your priority, like payroll, like ordering, like training new staff members. So all of those things are, those are priorities that you don't necessarily have time to start, uh, you know, taking on a new course online or maybe working with, um, you know, working with a coach. You've got the stuff that you need to do and it's just not the right timing. That is when you need to start outsourcing some stuff. All right, let's talk about the good, the bad and the ugly. Okay, so good for outsourcing. Um, you are strapped for time and you are discerning of your priorities. So you know what your priorities are, uh, you've made them priorities, and you know that things like, you wanna prioritize the stuff that you wanna do for yourself that you know you're good at, because when you're good at it, you usually like it as well, so that makes it a little easier. Um, but there does come to that point where you know you have to outsource um, because you're just too busy. So it's great if you're busy, that means our revenues are coming in and you have a little bit of extra cash to outsource that. Now, this goes to, for stuff at home as well. So, you know, you are much better off in the spa generating revenues than you are at home cleaning your floors or cleaning your bathroom or cleaning, you know, doing a deep clean of the kitchen. That's the stuff that you can outsource at home. Get a house cleaner. They're usually about 20 bucks an hour, 25 bucks an hour. If you're generating like 60 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour, $200 an hour, it just seems to make sense to me that you would hire somebody to clean your, do a deep clean of your house once a week rather than you spending the time in your house doing that. Um, I did that uh, for a really long period of time and then when my kids were old enough, I was like, hey, wait a minute, why am I paying for somebody else to clean my house when I've got you know, teenagers that are able-bodied and learn, need to learn how to clean anyways? So I outsourced my cleaning first to a cleaning company and then um, to, to my teenagers. Now that my teenagers are starting to leave home, uh, it's time to start outsourcing that again. Um, so another good thing, uh, the good stuff about outsourcing is that maybe you just don't have the aptitude for it. So if you don't have the aptitude for marketing, then outsource it because you know that you're not going to get it 
you're not going to get the strategy right because it's just not your thing. Um, so when, and when you don't get the strategy right, then all your action steps are kind of, uh, there's holes in them. So if you don't have an aptitude for it and you're busy, you've got revenues coming in, then it's time to start outsourcing some things. So that's the good, the good stuff about it. The good stuff about do it yourself is like I said before, if you've got the time to learn, then go for do it yourself. Um, the other piece that is a real pro about do it yourself is that it really gives you a deep understanding about the aspects of your business. So because you're doing do it yourself learning, you're doing some research, you're, um, you're probably with another group uh, or in a group. So you're, you're learning from them as well. So you just get a deeper understanding of whatever you're working on. So if, if you're working on your marketing, and you've taken, you're taking a do-it-yourself course, uh, a lot of them have uh, Facebook groups that you can connect with other owners who are in the same the same situation and, and learn, do a deep dive into that process. So that's a real bonus because once you've got that learning, it's solid. And the other aspect of do-it-yourself is that it's on your own time. So if you need flexibility, um, then do it yourself, right? Okay, let's talk about some of the bad stuff about outsourcing and do it yourself because we need to we need to be honest about the whole process. Outsourcing may not be a good fit for you. We need to know that. Do it yourself may not be a good fit. You need to know that. So, with outsourcing, when it can become uh stressful is when you haven't done your research uh, on the company or the person that you are wanting to outsource to. So, when I hired a VA, um I it was a big undertaking because, I mean, you can go, there's VAs all over the world. You can go on Upwork and hire a VA. Um, you, but what I chose to do was use my own personal network. So I just put a call out and uh, asked for, hey, who would you recommend for a virtual assistant? And it was through those recommendations that I did find somebody that was a good fit for me. But here's the thing, when sometimes, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, a spot entrepreneur, when you're super busy, sometimes all you wanna do is just offload it to the point where you're actually being irresponsible. Um, and I believe I have a blog post from last year or the year before about abdication versus delegation. And when we abdicate, we just like, here, take it. I don't wanna deal with it anymore. Uh, and you kind of walk away. And that can be problematic if you're outsourcing uh, aspects of your of running your business. So you, when you're outsourcing, you want to treat it like an employee. So you need to do your research, um, your due diligence. You need to do an interview. You need to check references. You need to, um, you can ask them for examples of their work if it's appropriate. So things like if you're looking for somebody to do your graphics for you, ask for examples of their graphics. Um, ask for testimonials. Um, I've even had it where I've had some coaching clients ask if they could speak to another one of my clients or somebody that's worked with me. And it takes a little longer for me to, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not like quick like a testimonial that I can give them, send them an email back with a testimonial. So, but I totally didn't mind connecting, you know, finding a client of mine that had the time to connect with uh, a new client who is wanting to do their due diligence. Good for them. Um, and the other piece of, um, that can sometimes go sideways is, and it's not always appropriate, but things for like creative, uh, for graphics, for writing blog posts, for doing social media, um, you know, maybe you have a little bit of a trial period that you like a week just to see what, you know, what they post, how they do, what their writing is like. Okay. So that you get a, a an idea that they, they get your brand, that they get your voice, that, uh, they get your tribe. So all of those pieces are really critical and can go totally sideways if you haven't done your due diligence when you're outsourcing. Uh, the other place that this can go sideways with outsourcing is that you didn't take the time to set up clear guidelines uh, and a system for, for, that, for that person. So if, again, if you're just abdicating and just dumping it on them, here, just do this, do my marketing, do my social media posts, just whatever. Then, and then you get upset with them when it's not the, your voice. It's, you know, the graphics aren't in your brand images or colors or feel. Um, what about if things aren't, uh, is, is there clear expectations on deliverables? So, um, 
you know, if you don't have these things in writing, they they 100% need to be in writing. It's it's great to have a verbal conversation with um, your, you know, who, if you're working with a VA or whatever, but you need to have clear communication about what's expected, what are you gonna get, and when are you gonna get it, okay? Um, and then what happens if it's not a good fit? So you need to know, like, are you locked into a contract? Um, if you are, that, that, and how long is that contract locked in for? So you just want to, it's just like an employee. You want to make sure you're setting, because this person, although they're considered a contractor or subcontractor, um, you want to set them up for success for because it's for your business. You're asking them to do work for your business. They need to understand your systems, your structure, your brand, your voice, all of it. And if you didn't do that and it goes sideways, that was your responsibility. You drop the ball. Okay, the bad part of do it yourself. Well, I think it goes to say you gotta be a self starter and you gotta be a self finisher. If you're not, uh, it just doesn't get done and you're back in the same spot, being overwhelmed and um, under delivering for your own business. So you gotta be a self starter. If you're not a self starter, if you're not a good finisher at projects, do it yourself is not a good fit for you. Um, if you can't afford to outsource and you're not good at those things, in my opinion, that just means that you need to pick up, pull up your socks and be more aware of your behavior so that you can be more of a self-starter and finish what you need to work on. The other aspect of do it yourself, that's the bad part I think, is that you have to figure it out for yourself and customize it for yourself. Um, typically, um, you know, if you're in a group setting when you're learning, um, you still have to sort it out for yourself. Nobody's doing it for you. You might have some guidance from whoever's teaching, um, but really it's up to you. It's not like it's one-on-one -on -one coaching where you get that, um, you know, close um, collaborative effect going. In a do-it-yourself, like true do-it-yourself, where maybe you've bought a course and it's at your own pace and the instructor's not really involved. It's just that you've got the information and it's up to you to learn it uh, that makes it even harder um, so sometimes you can get into groups like uh, often my courses well all my, co my my courses will always have always have Facebook groups and I'm always very active in them during the course and it's for that exact reason I know that with do it yourself it's really easy to fall off the bandwagon and then stuff just doesn't get done all right, let's talk about the ugly of outsourcing and the ugly of do-it-yourself. So the ugly part is if you haven't done your due diligence with your outsourcing, it can be an absolute disaster. Um, I, have, I have had a conversation with a spa owner who wanted a VA, wanted to offload her stuff, <clears throat> except that she abdicated it. <laughs> and was really ticked off when she got back her first um her first i think it was an email uh when the when the company sent back the email of that they were doing and i took a look at it and i was like yeah this is totally not on brand at all this is not your voice i totally agree but i asked her what did you give them how did what did you communicate to what your about what your brand was like how did you what did you communicate to them about your voice like how did this happen and it turns out she hadn't communicated what she wanted. So of course, <laughs> things aren't gonna work out quite as well as you'd hope for if you haven't done your due diligence, if you haven't set up your uh, what you need from them as well. So as far as like what is, like it's a disaster, but what does that mean? It's a waste of your time as far as <laughs> researching, interviewing, going through all those process, that whole process, because you're going to do that with multiple people, of course, before you choose the right candidate. Um, it's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your money um, if you've already gotten started with them and it's just not right. Now, I want to do a little caveat here because sometimes getting started with a new person, like a virtual assistant or working with somebody with your marketing, sometimes it just takes time to get to know each other. But I want you to make sure that if, if you are outsourcing that you, uh, if, the, if the person that you are wanting to work with isn't asking for certain kinds of information about your brand, your voice, about, um, you know, those kinds of details about your business, getting to know your business, that means, well, A, it's a little red flag, but B, that means that you need to step up and say, hey, we need to have a meeting about uh, and talk about this just to make sure that you're 100% clear on, on what I need you to do. Um, 
and then you know when it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money it's just really frustrating um, because you're back in the same position and really nothing has changed um, and the same position is that you're overworked or you're underskilled um, at whatever you're trying to outsource so you know it can go sideways but there's lots of ways for us when we're outsourcing that we can mitigate that and we need to make sure that we're being responsible leaders when we need to outsource for that all right the ugly of do-it-yourself really is that it just doesn't get done um, and you've spent money on courses uh, you've spent money on whatever and you don't finish it so you know, again, it, it circles back to it becomes a waste of your time and it becomes a waste of your money and you're frustrated because you're back in the same position that you are either overworked or underskilled at whatever you need to, to learn in order to grow your business. So I hope that helps you become a little bit more clear about when it may be time, uh, when it is time for you to start kind of feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm reaching past my span of control here. I need to, I either... I'm too busy because I, and I need to learn more or I need to have something done. Like I need my marketing done. I need my website copy done. I need my whatever done. Um, or you are like, I need clients. I don't have enough time. I have the time and I can do it myself. Either way, you know, we just need to be super aware of what our choices are as well as to know that we have some strong responsibilities in there. Um, whether it's outsourcing or do it yourself. So the hard part is part about doing it yourself is being accountable to yourself. I think it's much easier when we're to be accountable to other people, but being accountable to ourselves, that's sometimes when we really drop the ball on our own agreements. Um, so that's the tough part about do it yourself. All right, so if you are in a place where you are like, oh, I think I need to outsource. Oh, I mean, I don't really want to spend the money. Oh, I don't really have the time. Uh, it's time to like sit down and get really honest about, okay, let's map out some pricing. <laughs> How much is it going to cost me for outsourcing? If it's going to cost me, if this is the budget for outsourcing, how do like how does that um, how does that affect the business? So if we were to outsource something like a project, so outsource our marketing, that would free up a huge chunk of time for you to be able to work on either other growth projects like your training program for your team or maybe you need to hire which means you need to run your team through a training program so there's sometimes there's there's better priorities uh that will eventually that can earn you more money rather than um rather than taking the do-it-yourself route uh and then just bogging yourself down even more because when you bog yourself down even more then it gets harder to be revenue pr uh, producing because you've got too many uh, balls in the air. If you've got too many balls in the air as the owner, um, you're too, you're getting too distracted and you know, something's gonna fall, a ball's gonna fall out. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions about outsourcing or other comments about outsourcing and doing it yourself or do it yourself work, then feel free to um, make a, leave a comment here. And I'm curious to know, have you had any outsourcing wins? Have you had any outsourcing um, bad and uglies? <laughs> um, and what about do-it-yourself? Are you a spa owner who's the whole thing you've done as do-it-yourself? Most of my career, I've been do-it-yourself uh, with probably more in the past uh, five years of uh, seeking out help and paying for help than I ever have before. And... I noticed last year when I got a VA that my business grew quite a bit because it allowed me to free up some mental bandwidth for lead generation, uh, for creating content. So yeah, so I was able to kind of put the marketing, I create the strategy, but my VA implements it all. Um, and that just saves me a huge amount of time and I can get focused on uh, using my time for revenue generating projects. Okay, thanks for joining me uh, for the, another week of Spa Business Break. And um, if you're wanting to outsource your marketing, yesterday I just launched the fall marketing package. And if you're too busy this, this summer to create your fall marketing strategy, then you need to outsource it. If you just don't like it, <laughs> if you don't like doing a marketing strategy, then outsource it. 
Um, and I've already got like four people that are like, yes, please sign me up. So, uh, so I think I'm gonna have a busy summer creating marketing strategies. So what I do is I create the marketing strategy for you. We meet first for 30 minutes online and we do some co-creative collaboration brainstorming. And then you leave it up to me to create your strategy. And then we meet again for another 30 minute coaching call and I uh, walk you through the implementation. And then all you have to do is just follow the steps, super easy. So if you wanna outsource your marketing um, strategy creation this summer, I'm your girl. Uh, and I will put the link to that in the, uh, in the description here. Okay, that's it for me for Spa Business Break. Thanks for joining me.